Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film and welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So we have a very straightforward tutorial because we're gonna be creating an audio visualization effect that can be added to any type of motion graphic and just adds nice level of detail to whatever you're doing. So it's really cool effects. We want to sync music to a graphic, no problem. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have these nice little audio effects that sync for a song. So enough talking, let's jump into our tutorial. All right, so after we're done creating the audio visualization or spectrum on an object, I'm going to show you how to build out an actual scene like we saw in the example. So what we're going to do here is go to our tutorial composition. The only thing we have in here is just a text, um, a soundtrack, and just a background. The background is not necessary. So once we have the audio set up, I'm going to show you how you can wrap it around any type of object. But first, I need to set this up so uh, we can see how easy it is to wrap it around you know, other objects like a logo, you know, a shape or a letter. So what we need to do is go up to layer new solid and we'll call this one audio. Okay. Then we'll go up to effect generate and we're going to grab audio spectrum. Spectrum is a lot better than the waveform. You get a little bit more options with spectrum. And the first thing we need to do is set the audio layer. So right now go to the drop down and set it to your soundtrack that you should have in your timeline. So boom, So automatically, so it'll automatically be reacting to your soundtrack. So our next options here, we have start and end point, and this is where you want to place your audio spectrum. So we can grab this end point here, and we can put it at the corner of this letter, and or at this point, and then take the start point and put it at the bottom of our letter here. This is good, and then we'll come here to the bottom where it says side A and B, and we'll set this to side A. This way, it'll be going over to the left to right. We're kind of just wrapping this around a nice object manually. And then we'll come here to maximum height and we can increase this so we can you know, see what's going on here. And then we can change the colors. I'm just gonna do white to blend in with my letter. And then we can increase the number of frequency bands. So we have a little bit more in there and that looks really good. We can lower the softness to 0% so it's you know nice and a solid shape in there. You can increase the thickness if you want, if you, you know, really want to go over the top um, if you don't have any gaps just increase the number of frequency bands until you no longer have gaps and that's really cool but I like the gaps there and the start and end frequency simply allow you to shift like the data around so if you want it you know a little bit more in your face there that's cool or if you want it a little bit more subtly just go ahead and mess with the start and end frequencies increase the hue interpolation and you get some really you know rainbow colors there but I don't want that, I just want to keep it as solid color to match my object. So now that we have this effect set up, I want to show you how you can wrap this around any path because obviously what I'm doing here is probably not what you want to do. So let's say I want to wrap the entire you know, audio effect around our entire letter here. What we can do here is if you're working with a letter or you know a title, you can right click it, go to create and click on create mask from text and it'll create a new object here. And what we'll do here is just copy one, the mask, copy it and then paste it into our audio layer and then go to the audio effect and change the path to the mask that you put in there. And then you might need to change the side option, so I'll change it to side B. And then we'll come here to the mask layer and set it to none. And now we have our entire audio going around our object, and then you need to increase your frequency bands. You know, it's a little bit out of control, so that's why I didn't do that manually for this. So also what we can you know go ahead and do here is so we can grab our audio layer and say if you want to wrap this around like a circle, just draw out like a mask like this. Um, and then obviously set that to mask one and, you know, turn, set it to none and change the side and you can wrap it around circle and then we can manually draw out like a, you know, a circle path. So now we have it revolving around a circle and use the logo. You might just need to use the pen tool or if you have an illustrator file, that's pretty cool. All right. So we're basically done with this audio effect, but I want to show you how we can take this even further and build out a better scene like we saw in our demo. So. What we can do here is grab all of our layers except for the background and we'll go to layer pre-compose and we'll just call it audio react done good but one thing that i always like to add are you know stock elements to just help bring things you know closer together so i have these distortion assets uh, that just allow us to bring more detail to our composition so i can bring these into our timeline and i'll offset them in time and that looks great and then one thing i'll do is set the blend mode to screen we also have a variety of different assets like lens flares, pre-made motion particles that I can just bring in here. So adding these elements makes a huge difference and has a lot of value to the composition, but we can just a little bit further with our own built-in effects 
here instead of After Effects. So, and if you're looking for a good pack that has just, you know, an all-in-one stock elements, I highly suggest taking a look at Cine Punch, which has 9,500 plus uh, stock elements that you can bring into After Effects and there's transitions for Premiere and so much more out of 9,000. So if you want to have a well-rounded pack that has flares, particles, and other stock elements, uh, I'll go ahead and drop Sydney Punch. That link will be in the description. You can check that out and take a look at all 9,500 elements if you can. So, so let's make sure to grab all of our layers and pre-compose them and we'll just call it all. Great. Then let's go up to uh, hit PR and keyboard for position. Let's all click the stopwatch and let's type in wiggle. Open parenthesis 2, comma 40, close parenthesis. And this will add a little bit of like camera shake to this. But we have these edges here. So what we can do is go to effect, stylize, and we're going to add repeat tile. And we will expand right and left. And then go to tiling and click on checker flip H. Then let's go ahead and duplicate this effect. Set the expand down and up, you know, for to 100. And then set to checker flip V. And now you'll be able to just repeat the edges of everything here and that's good then we can go to layer new adjustment layer we go to effect distort and let's add optics compensation let's increase this to maybe like 80 and click on reverse lens distortion and this has like a really nice distortion effect to it really nice and then let's go to effect noise and grain and let's add noise set this to like eight percent and i like to uncheck use color noise and this looks great. So now with all of our effects applied, here is our composition. So I hope you found this audio to visual sync effect very helpful. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. And you can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creative.